Today we're going to be taking a look at a fairly high-end 4K projector from XGIMI, the Horizon Pro 4K. So this projector comes packaged very nicely and having it shipped from Amazon, it survived the shipping abuse very well. It actually came inside of another box not shown in my video that protected it while inside the shipping box from Amazon. But even if Amazon decided just to ship it without putting it in their own box, I feel like it would have survived just the same. I thought that was, you know, important to point out with the way it was shipped to me. So in the box, obviously we get the projector, which isn't a cube style that looks very nice. Uh, it weighs about six and a half pounds or so, maybe a little under. Uh, it's made out of aluminum panels on the outside and plastic on the tops and bottom. Everything here looks and feels quality with the materials that they've used. So this projector is powered by Android 10, giving you access to the Google Play Store for games and video streaming services. Though it doesn't have access to Netflix due to XGIMI not being an uh, officially supported device approved by Netflix. So that's kind of a bummer. But as the system does have Chromecast built in, you can easily stream Netflix off of another device to the projector. Now, the layout of the ports looks good to me, you know, with access to a few buttons on the top of the projector uh, for your power, volume, and play and pause buttons. Now, the ports on the back include two HDMI 2.0, two USB 2.0, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, an optical audio jack, and an Ethernet port. So underneath, you also have a quarter-inch screw mount if you want to put this on a stand or mount it any which way. Now, the box also contains a fairly nice-feeling remote with buttons to access everything that you would need to change the inputs, navigate the built-in Android TV settings, and, you know, choosing your streaming service and whatnot, and, you know, dealing with audio and accessing menus. The only other stuff you get in the box is a manual and a fairly beefy power brick and cable. That thing does have a little heft to it. So the projector has 2.4 and 5G Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0 support. The system has two gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage for downloading stuff off of Google Play. Now the projector is listed to be 2200 ANSI lumens with a 25,000 hour lamp life which equals to about four hours a day for almost 17 years. Typically, you know, we cannot confirm these numbers, can't test it for 17 years, but this does sound good. And if this is all good and the lamp is quality, should last you quite a long time with normal use. So the projector also supports HDR10 and can display up to a 300 inch image though the space requirement for that size was not something I was able to test. It does seem to require you to have the projector at around 26 feet away uh, from the screen to accomplish that size. So a, a, a little more space than what I had to, to work with here. Now a more reasonable, you know, screen size of hundred to 120 inches only requires the projector to be about nine feet away from your screen, which is pretty much how I had it set up. Now, they also state that the projection system uses XGIMI's own XView image engine system for better clarity and realistic colors and uses 60 hertz MEMC frame interpolation technology to prevent image blurring and ghosting in images. So now that we got most of the specs out of the way, I want to speak more on my own experiences using this projector. So with games, the image quality is very impressive. And I, I didn't really have any issue with lag that I noticed, but it is noted that with this projector, it does have 35 milliseconds of latency in game mode. Have to put it to game mode to even get to that 35 milliseconds. Now, this may not be the best for gaming when it comes to a display for console or PC games, but it may be fine for most people. I didn't seem to perceive any additional lag in games from my normal play on other displays. Now getting the system set up and going was fairly quick and easy. Uh, if you've ever set up any other streaming box like a Fire Stick, Roku, or Android TV box, you won't have any issues. This actually may be quicker and easier than some of those that I just mentioned. Now the system boots up quick in just a few seconds and will autofocus every time you power it on. And this works great. 
And never did I have to manually adjust the focus. I mean, this is a feature I really can appreciate and I legit never had an issue with it. It autofocused and I didn't have to fine tune it or anything. I've used other projectors where it would do autofocus and like sometimes I'd have to just tweak it a little tiny bit. But with this, I never had to bother. So that, that was definitely a, a huge plus. Now you also have access to auto keystone adjustments which is essentially digital image adjustments for like the angle and whatnot. Now it's a nice feature to have if you don't have the best position to place the projector, but it's always optimal not to use any kind of digital keystone corrections uh, when able as it does alter the image digitally. This can lead to differences in resolution, size of display, and an annoying gray bezel being displayed around the image to compensate for the alteration of that image. I find this to be a distraction as you can wind up having like a, a warped, uneven gray bezel that's always visible. So I, I don't like having it uh, set up where it's not optimal and having to use auto keystone. But essentially, when you use auto keystone, the projector will sense the best way to straighten up the image for you. Now, the projector, it has these uh, built-in gyros and cameras to accomplish these special features. And another feature that they list to have is obstacle avoidance, which I could never get to actually recognize and avoid obstacles, but I have seen this demonstrated properly elsewhere. So maybe just with how I have everything set up and the screen I was using, it just didn't wanna work for me. But essentially during auto keystone adjustments, it will scan the surface and adjust the image to avoid obstacles in front of it. For me, this isn't really that important of a feature for a projector like this. I mean, typically, if you're buying a $1,700 projector, I don't think you're gonna be moving it around the different places and just finding random walls to project on that you might have a poster or a picture frame up on. Uh, you know, this is a projector for a home theater setup, and I'd imagine most people who are interested in something like this will have a specific spot set up and a screen to use with it, but it is a feature. Like I said, I couldn't get it to work for me, but I've seen plenty of others demonstrate it and it may be a feature that you find interesting and useful, but for me, not, not so much. Even though uh, I couldn't utilize it, it's not something I would have needed to utilize anyway. Now, the projector's image quality is one of the nicest I have seen with any projector I've used. I mean, it's bright and clear. The colors look really good, and I, I didn't see any of that blurring or ghosting or anything, so those claims seem to be pretty legit. Now, using the projector on an ALR screen, it still looked pretty good during daylight hours and you know, with quite a bit of light bleeding into the room, but really it looks great in a more dark room during the night, that's with any projector. Now the built-in speakers are pretty good for a setup like this. I mean, I have a, a Dolby Atmos setup in my home which is leagues above any built-in speaker. So that's what I typically default to and was easily able to connect this projector to my Atmos setup wirelessly and via HDMI. But I do have to say, the times I used the Horizon Pro with its built-in 8-watt Harman Kardon speakers, I thought it was fairly passable and definitely a lot better audio quality than any other built-in speakers I've used on a projector in, a, in the past. So, I mean, if that's the only speakers you have to use or able to use, it's quite passable. It sounds decent to me. Now, navigating the Android TV system, you know, was typical, worked fine and was fluid with the included remote, didn't really have any issues with it not recognizing button presses or anything. And accessing and changing video settings is simple and easily accessed within the system. Overall, this was a great experience using the projector for watching movies and playing some games. I would more so use this for movies than games, but it, it, it is uh, fine for games if you can deal with the uh, 35 milliseconds of latency with uh, game mode, which I, I don't, I'm not trying to like overdo it with that, but it's just worth noting. It didn't bother me, but some people it may. Now, I definitely, you know, was impressed with this projector, especially having been been fixated on finding projectors uh, for use at home, especially during these last past couple years when theaters were closed. Like that was a big part of uh, what we did, you know, going out to the theater occasionally and watching movies and. That was something I just kind of got stuck on. Like, let me find a, a really good projector. And and I can highly recommend this one if looking for a higher end 4K projector and it's you know within your budget. 
definitely look at what's out there and I think the, the pricing is, is reasonable for what it does and the specs that it has. Now, if interested, I will have links down below in the description and pinned comments. Really do appreciate you guys watching. Thanks, and I will catch you on the next one. Bye.